Well, tonight I'm going to speak on the gospel of Christ. And then you may think, well, they, they know what that is, but we, we never know what God really has for us. And um, I'm just going to start by saying it's about Christ being made manifest in us. That's what the Lord is after. Christ in a people. So we'll start with this. It is the will of God that the risen Christ who is in heaven come down to dwell in each of us. It is the will of God that the risen Christ who is in heaven be established on the throne in each of our hearts. It is the will of God that the risen Christ be revealed in each of us as he is established as king in our hearts, as he is established as our head, and as we are built together as the body of Christ in him. We understand that God's purpose in this. I'm talking beyond salvation here. God has a deeper purpose. It is the will of God that the risen Christ dwell in us and be glorified and be revealed in us, the risen Christ. Hallelujah. Can we comprehend the goodness of this gospel? It's not about us, it's about Him being revealed in us. It's the will of God. It's the eternal will of God from before creation. His whole purpose in creating us. That He would have a vessel through which He might reveal Himself to all of His creation. We have a very high calling. Praise God. All of creation is waiting for this. Because God dwells in unapproachable light. The angels cannot approach Him. But they know that He is to be revealed in a people. And they're watching us, and they're waiting to see Christ revealed in a people. They're learning of God by watching as He's revealed in us. And what are we doing? We're hindering the Lord. We're not allowing Him to come in and transform us and reveal Himself because we're busy with ourself. Revealing ourself rather than allowing the Lord to come in. But you see, He doesn't dwell in angels. That was not the plan. It was to dwell in man. And that is our calling. And they are waiting to see. He intends to dwell in us. And He intends that through us, as vessels, he will be revealed to all creation. The God who dwells in unapproachable light is to be revealed to all creation in a people who have made their hearts ready and allowed him to come in and transform them. Praise God. <clears throat> Let us not hinder the work of the Lord. This is a high calling. Let us not hinder what he is wanting to do in us. Because you see, the devil, he doesn't want this. He doesn't want Christ revealed in a people. That just multiplies the problem he had when Christ was here. So the devil wants to distract us with all kinds of things to keep this from happening. He wants to distract us because he fears 
the manifestation of Christ in his body. And we are to be that body in which he manifests. You see, the victory is in Jesus. In Jesus dwelling in us and manifesting himself. Therein lies our victory. This victory of salvation was accomplished at the cross. And Jesus has risen and sits at the right hand of the Father and he sent the Holy Ghost down from heaven. Why? To do a work in us. To prepare us as we prepare our own hearts that he might be enthroned in us and come to dwell in his people. Praise God. But the devil wants to limit our understanding of this. So we have a lot of religion, a lot of ideas that we're taught that cut short the plan of God. Praise God. It is the will of God that all of us manifest his son. Every one of us. That is his will. Because all of us, our past is gone. When Jesus comes in and transforms us, our past is gone. So it does not matter. It is the will of God to manifest His Son in all of us. However, due to the fall of man, this will only be the case in a remnant few. There's only a remnant in which He will be manifested. Because of the fall, most will not allow him to come in. Most will choose not to be a part of this high calling in Christ. The word tells us we are to resist the devil and he will flee. But many do not resist the devil. In fact, they open the door for him. They open the door to allow the devil to influence their lives. And in so doing, they close the door to Christ. They become bewitched by his lies, and they cannot hear from the Lord. That's where we find ourselves. It's called making provision. We're not to make provision for our sin. When we make provision for the devil to come in and speak lies to us, it blocks up our hearing, and we cannot hear the Lord. It closes the door to the Lord working because we've allowed the devil to come in. And we do this by things that we watch, things that we listen to, the people we surround ourselves with, everything that is giving input into us. The devil will find an avenue to get to us if we allow it. So if we know that we're susceptible to something, we need to not make that provision. Right? Praise God, keep our eye on the Lord, that he may work in us. Because the devil aims to keep as many as he can. And if he could, he would keep all of us from ever coming into our inheritance, which is Christ in us, the hope of glory. You know that? Our inheritance isn't heaven. It isn't going to heaven. Our inheritance is Christ coming to dwell in us and Christ being revealed through us to all of creation. Christ is our inheritance. You see the bewitching lies of the devil that are out there that keep us from understanding what the Lord's saying to us. Oh, praise God. It is Christ in us that brings forth the fruit. We talk of the fruit of the Spirit. It is Christ in us. It is Christ in us that reveals his testimony. When we speak of having the testimony of Christ, it comes from Christ in us. It isn't me talking about a Christ that I don't even know. He must come in us. Christ in us reveals the gospel to the entire universe. Can we understand the magnitude of of our calling in Christ. But it starts with Christ in us. 
and many are not even at the starting line, already trying to finish the race, and they haven't even begun because of the lies that have been out there for centuries, hindering us, and we don't even realize it. It starts with Christ in us. The gospel of Christ is powerful. We have not seen that because we have not seen the full revelation of the gospel of Christ in a people yet. It's been hindered. It's been veiled over. But it is a powerful working of the Holy Spirit who sent down from heaven after Christ rose from the dead. The Holy Spirit is the one who works this in us. May we simply stand in awe of our God. May we come to the understanding of what it is He has called us to. And get our focus off of ourselves. I mean, who are we to have such a high calling in Christ? Who are we that the Lord who created heaven and earth would call us that he might enter into us and reveal himself to all of his creation through us who were made from the dust of the earth and who fell and rebelled against him. How awesome he is to offer this to us. And who are we to throw away something so precious just so we can enjoy the filth of this world. And that is what we do. We are throwing away a very precious calling, a very precious treasure that is being offered to us for the filth of this world. Every time we reject Christ, every time we hinder Him, every time we block Him, how? By serving ourselves rather than serving the Lord by serving our own lusts rather than serving the Lord, by serving our own desires, focusing on what we want rather than focusing on what does He want and humbling ourselves before Him and keeping ourselves under His mighty hand. We reject Him when we believe the lies of the devil, when we sit around and wallow in self-pity or when we puff ourselves up in pride. It's all the same. We're hindering him. We're rejecting him. We're throwing aside this treasure for the filth of this world and the lies of the devil. And it's all the same. It doesn't matter what muck hole we've been caught up in in life. It's all the same. Let us lay it all aside and allow Christ to come in. Let us be done with this and get our eyes off this mess and allow Christ to come in. Let us partake of Him. Let us eat of Him, not the things of this world. The gospel of Christ is not for some future time when we get to heaven. It is for now. Let him dwell in us now. Let us enter the kingdom of God now. When Christ comes in, there is the kingdom of God. There are many examples in the scripture of those in whom Christ was made manifest to others. Others can only see Christ through one of us. Some of them. Epaphras. Epaphras was a fellow servant of Paul. He was a faithful minister to the Colossians. Why? Christ in him. Christ in him allowed Epaphras to be a faithful minister to the Colossians. Okay? Lydia, a woman of the city of Thyatira, it says, out of her heart poured fruits such that she attended to the things which were spoken of Paul. Brethren were comforted in her house. 
Why? The outpouring of the Holy Spirit on her. Christ dwelling in her. Christ dwelling in her comforted the brethren. The power of the Holy Spirit made her able to walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work. It's by the power of the Holy Spirit working in her life. It wasn't some future time in heaven, it was now. And we are to do likewise, and in the process increase in our knowledge of God, knowing Him personally, one-on-one, -on -one, because He dwells in us. We must know Him personally. And I don't mean some superficial doctrine. He must dwell within, and we must have that relationship with Him and know Him, not just hear about Him, not just read about Him, and definitely not just talk about Him. Because we can talk about Him and not know Him at all. We must have that personal relationship such that He enters into our hearts and that He is enthroned as King in our hearts, which means I no longer live, but He lives in me. And that should be now. Yes, His enthronement in our hearts means our dethronement. And this is a stumbling block to many. We must be dethroned for Christ to be made manifest in us. We must get off our high horses. We must get over ourselves. We must humble ourselves and allow Him to enter in and have His way. And stop all this nonsensical focus on what we want and who we are and what we did and who we know. And me, 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 me. I, 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 I. It's a bunch of garbage. It's a bunch of garbage, okay? Let us get our eyes on Him. We must lay down our life that His life dwell in us. Stop pursuing what we want and start seeking Him for what He wants. We must lay aside our way of doing things and follow His way. Our will and follow His will. Our mind, follow His mind. We need to pray and ask Him for the mind of Christ to come in because He doesn't think like we do. And we can't tell Him anything. We're not in a position to. We must lay aside our preferences that His will be made manifest in us because we don't even know what's good for us. Doesn't matter what we like. Doesn't matter what we want. It doesn't matter what we think. What is the Lord saying? If we want Him to accomplish His will in us, we need to follow Him. And there again, stumbling block. Stumbling block. I can't lay down my life. Well, you're going to perish with it. But we can't have it both ways. We cannot live our life and have Christ. We cannot. At some point, we must make a decision, or we will be among the many who do not make it. We cannot have our way and His way. It's His way. It's His way. Praise God. Praise God. The fruit of the Spirit, we want that in our life, but it comes with Christ in us. It is by His Spirit. It is not of ourselves. Anything of ourselves is just doing good works, which are filthy rags to the Lord. It needs to be by His Spirit operating through us. And the Word says, we are strengthened unto patience and long-suffering with joyfulness by the Spirit. So we need strength. Our strength is in Christ. As He comes in, He gives us that strength. We say, I'm dealing with impatience. 
by Christ coming in, he strengthens us unto patience. You see, there's a testing unto long-suffering. We, we must, to have that fruit of long-suffering, guess what? It comes with long-suffering. But we're not able to do it in ourselves. We give up, we quit, we get angry, we get mad, we get depressed, we can't handle it. But by Christ entering in, the power of the Spirit strengthens us that we are able, as Christ is able, and we do it with joy. We have that joyfulness of the Spirit. And that joy conquers all of these, these things that we concern ourselves with, that we worry about. His joy surpasses all of it. But until we know that joy, we don't, we don't know that. But it is the strength of Christ in us. And I guess... The bottom line is, without Him in us, we will not make it. Something will trip us up and cause us to fall without Him in us. So in the process, what are we to do? Thank the Lord. We are to be thanking Him that we are partakers of this inheritance of the saints. We are to be thankful that Christ is being made manifest in us. You know, this is a journey, and the journey involves a lot of fiery trials. But let us be thankful, because Christ is being made manifest in us, and the Lord is strengthening us with joyfulness. Let us be thankful, not pining away in a corner somewhere for our life of sin, for our life of self-indulgence. Let us not look to the past like Lot's wife. If we make the decision to go forward with the Lord, let us go forward with the Lord. Let us consider the glory of Christ in us, revealed to all of creation. And like Paul, let us consider all of our past dung. Christ is to have the preeminence in all things. He is to have the preeminence in all things. Does he have the preeminence in our life? Or do other things, namely ourself, have the preeminence? How do we know what that is? Well, what do we talk about most? Is it Christ? What are we seeking most? Is it Christ? Where's our priority? Seeking Christ or something else. There are those who seek preeminence for themselves, and those there are those who seek for Christ to have the preeminence. Okay? And those who seek preeminence for themselves do not receive the messengers of the Lord in whom Christ has the preeminence. That may sound a little complicated, but it is the truth. Any messenger in whom Christ has the preeminence will never be received by others, leaders, who want the preeminence for themselves. They want nothing to do with the preeminent Christ. So understand, if we allow Christ to have that preeminence, there will be those who want nothing to do with us anymore. It is because they want nothing to do with Christ. Why? Because, like Diotrephes, Diotrephes is mentioned in 3 John 1 verse 9. Like him, they are seeking the preeminence for themselves. So they will hinder and this is why messengers of the Lord, true messengers of the Lord, are met with malicious words, blocking their reception, hindering Christ working in his own church, because people want the preeminence. They're seeking their own. They're not seeking the Lord. They may be seeking their own in his name, but they're not in Christ. 
Praise God. For Christ to have the preeminence, which is where he belongs, we must follow him through the cross. That's where we lay it all down, and we die, and he lives. We follow him through the cross, and in the process, we lose our preeminence. But the cross reconciles us with Christ. Praise God. And in that cross, it does away with everything of our past. All of our wickedness, all of the dung, all of the mess that we've made, it is gone in that cross. We follow him through that cross, and he takes the preeminence. He is seated as king on our, the throne of our hearts, and we are made new creatures in Christ with no past. You see the goodness of our God? But we must follow him through and be willing to give it up. Praise God. And it is a journey. We must continue in faith. And if we continue on the journey, following him in faith, not being turned away from the hope of the gospel, praise God not being drawn away by our own lusts, not being lured away from him by the lies of the devil. You know, we can pray and ask the Lord, Lord, help me. I don't even know which lies of the devil I believe. I don't know what I was taught, what's true, what's not. Lord, reveal what is error and give me truth. Take away the lies and give me Christ. We can pray. And he, he is faithful. He will help. He will correct us. But we must keep our focus on Him and on the truth of the Gospel. Christ, the hope of glory, made manifest in a people. Praise God. His righteousness becomes our righteousness. He is our righteousness in this. And we are to be that people. That is the eternal will of God that everything in our past be erased and Christ enter in. That is the will of God. Praise God. The mystery among all nations since the beginning of time, what is God's plan? What is God's purpose? Why am I here? And it tells us in Colossians 2.27, and I'm almost done. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Have we ever been told that? Have we ever been told that's our purpose? God wants Christ to dwell in us and reveal him to all of creation. That's why we're here. And our past doesn't matter. If we follow him through the cross, he takes it away and covers us in his righteousness by his blood. And he works in us by the power of the Holy Spirit to transform us into a new creation. So we are not what we were, because what we were has passed away and doesn't matter anymore. Praise God. The work of the Holy Spirit is to manifest Christ in each of us. As we let go of our past, we let go of our life, and we allow Him to work in us and allow Him to change us. It is not of our own effort Stop trying to do it. Just bow to the Lord and ask Him to do it. It is us humbling ourselves before Him. It is us falling on the rock, allowing ourselves to be broken, and not hardening our hearts against Him with worldly knowledge and wisdom, because that's what that does. If we learn about Him, with worldly knowledge, worldly wisdom, and we don't know him, it will harden our hearts against him and we become very religious. It is in not walking drunk in the lies of the devil, because that's where most people are as well. There's so many lies of the devil, they are drunk spiritually on these lies and they cannot focus on the Lord. We can ask him to clear, clear this up out of us by bringing in truth. So let us grow in Christ on a personal level 
one on one. It's between each of us and God. You know, the Lord spoke face to face with Moses. And my question is, is he speaking face to face with any of us? Why not? If the Lord is not speaking face to face with someone, why not? It's not because it's not possible. You see? There's hope there. What are we allowing to get in the way of our relationship with him? If we want a closer relationship with him, James says, draw near to him, he'll draw near to you. Find out what's in the way and get rid of it. And he will come. And it is a growing relationship, and at some point, yes, each and every one of us can get to a face-to-face -face relationship with God. That is His will. Now, will that happen? No, because of the fall. We are not all willing to go the distance. But if we are, it is there for us. And no one has an advantage there, no matter where we come from. If we want it, it is there for us. If we seek Him and press in, you see, He would that the Spirit make Christ manifest in us for His glory, so that His creation might know Him. But we're too busy. We're too busy manifesting ourselves to humble ourselves. We're too busy talking about ourselves to be silent before the Lord, to cease from our labors, to rest in Him, and to allow the working of his spirit for his eternal glory. We are to cease from our labors. When we disallow the spirit in this way, we are hindering the eternal work of God. We don't even realize it. Let us recognize this about the Lord, that his eternal will is for Christ to dwell in us and rule and reign eternally from within us as he is enthroned in our hearts. But that will only happen if he is enthroned in our hearts. And now is the time to do that. Because if not, we will miss out on our inheritance. Like Esau, we will miss out and we will have sold it for a bowl of porridge. Now is the time, if we're seeking the Lord, now is the time. He is knocking at the door. Will we step down from the throne in our hearts and allow him in as king? Will we? And I will end with one, one last comment. Heaven, heaven is not the dwelling place of God eternally. We are. We understand that we are. That's why he created us. He's not going to stay in heaven. He wants to come and live in a people. But the people won't have him. His people are rejecting him. Let us not reject him. He says, come, come. Praise God. Praise God, the time is now. Let us not let this pass before our time runs out. Praise God. Would you stand, please? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I, I know that might shock some people who've always heard that we go and live in heaven forever. But seek the Lord for truth. He did create heaven and he did create earth. And there will be a new heaven and there will be a new earth. But God's dwelling place eternally is to be in man. He is to come into us to dwell eternally with us and in us. But we must allow that. Praise God. You know, it grieved David that he had a palace to live in and the Lord had no house. There was no house of the Lord. And he wanted to build it. But you know, the Lord says, I don't dwell in places built with hands. 
the hands of men. He doesn't dwell in those places. No other creation has been asked or considered for God to live, dwell in them. That is man's special high calling. Praise God. Let us recognize this and be joyful and thank Him and praise Him and seek His face that we not lose out on this high calling and not for our sake, but that the Lord may have an eternal dwelling place with His people. Praise God.